this video, I'll talk about female pattern hair loss, some basic facts about female pattern hair loss, which is a very common type of hair loss or alopecia. We'll talk about what can be done on a very fundamental level as far as workup is concerned. As far as supplements, what's my take on that? And then we'll discuss some of the more common and effective treatments for this condition. Before we get started, I'd like to thank everyone who's purchased, read, and benefited from my book, Six Skin, Skincare Made Simple. Get your copy today at Amazon Books at the link below or at the QRS code to my side. Now let's get on with the video. So what is female pattern hair loss? Female pattern hair loss is a very common condition leading to thinning of the hair on the hair of women, obviously, in a patterned way, meaning there's a specific way or pattern or distribution on the scalp with which this condition appears in the vast majority of cases. Those areas are the top of the scalp or in the vertex as well. The top of the scalp and the top of the scalp ranging anywhere from the front to the back of the scalp to the vertex area. This condition has some genetic factors affecting it as well as some internal factors that could be leading to worsening of the condition as well, such as hormonal dysregulation and other issues. As far as the trajectory of this condition, this is a chronic and progressive condition in most cases, meaning it is incurable, it sticks around, and in many cases, in the vast majority of cases, it slowly progresses and makes the areas thinner and thinner and the hair appearance thinner and thinner. So it definitely is an aesthetic nuisance. In many cases, it is a very serious problem for the sufferer. The thing about female pattern hair loss is that it is so common and very, very gradual that a lot of women suffering from it are late to turn to their doctors to seek medical attention and try to treat the condition. In many cases, the patient has waited for many long years, sometimes even decades before she sought evaluation and treatment. And in those cases, reversing some of the hair loss could be very, very challenging. It is, by the way, challenging to reverse hair loss in the first place, but when you've waited out this long, it could be even more challenging and more difficult to do that. Now, beyond genetics, some factors that could be leading to worsening of female pattern hair loss are hormonal changes that are consistent with conditions like PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. In some cases, iron deficiency could lead to worsening of the condition as well. In most cases, however, female pattern hair loss is completely unrelated to anything that we can detect in our blood work. And those cases are considered to be local and are treated to target the condition and the mechanisms that are affecting the condition and driving it forward. If you've benefited from this video so far, share, like, and subscribe. Comment in the comment section, let me know what type of hair loss you're suffering from. If you're suffering from female pattern hair loss, I'd love to hear about how long you've suffered from it and what sort of treatments have you tried to employ. Now let's get on with the video. So very importantly, when you have a condition like female pattern hair loss or any type of hair loss for that matter, is to be laser focused in the approach and treat with exactly what works and avoid anything that'll be a waste of your time and money. Specifically, very important is to avoid things that are sort of a wide distribution shotgun approach that a lot of people take, which is one of the elements of which is hair supplements. And I've spoken about hair supplements in previous videos very important to avoid hair supplements because hair supplements do not treat any specific type of hair loss. In fact, they don't treat any type of hair loss whatsoever. They're kind of a feel-good product that is prepackaged with multiple vitamins that have been shown through sometimes no evidence and sometimes little evidence to have some sort of benefit or role in the growth of hair. That doesn't mean they'll treat any type of hair loss. More so, that doesn't mean they'll treat your type of hair loss. In every hair loss case, every single person suffering from hair loss must be evaluated individually and treated effectively with a treatment that works for them specifically. So you can't just take the shotgun approach, the wide range shotgun approach with hair supplements. That'll be a waste of your time and money. So if you're taking those supplements, I strongly recommend you stop them immediately and go see a board certified dermatologist to get your condition evaluated and treated effectively. The other thing to remember is that female pattern hair loss is not a condition that is caused by hair grooming practices. Unlike other types of hair loss that I've discussed before, 
like central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, which you can watch the video at the link above, female pattern hair loss is actually not a condition that is caused by hair grooming practices. That being said, I would advise not to abuse the scalp too much. If you can avoid shampooing to the best of your ability, shampoo as little as possible, any other, any other hair grooming practices that could be drying the scalp or irritating the scalp, I would do my best to avoid not to complicate matters any further with other elements such as irritation of the scalp and possibly traction on the hair, which could add another element to your hair loss case that's already ongoing. Now, a very important question is a lot of women come and ask me, I, I used to dye my hair. I stopped dyeing my hair. Can I dye my hair again? Or I'm afraid that dyeing my hair is making my condition worse. And to the best of my knowledge and understanding, there's no evidence to suggest that dyeing your hair is making your female pattern hair loss worse, meaning I don't think it is making your condition worse and I don't think it is causing your condition. I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to dye your hair and feel good about your appearance. That being said, if your hair dye is irritating the scalp, which is a totally separate issue and not a given, if that is the case, seek advice from your board certified dermatologist and make sure that you're using hair dye that is not irritating your scalp and complicating your issue even more. But you can definitely dye your hair. Don't worry about it. It is not causing your female pattern hair loss. Now, as far as treating female pattern hair loss, there's several things to consider. First of all, in the rare event that this is related to anything internal going on, such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, or related to iron deficiency. Now, these are not the causes, but they can definitely be exacerbating factors. Those need to be addressed. So if PCOS is your issue, you need to obviously treat the PCOS and address any underlying hormonal issues that are a result of that condition. The other thing is if you have iron deficiency, that could be undermining or worsening your condition. And if you do have iron deficiency, that needs to be obviously tested and treat it, supplement it until the iron deficiency is made whole and you no longer are iron deficient. And that way you can actually respond to the appropriate treatment as expected. Now, as far as treatments are concerned, these range anywhere from the topical treatments through pill treatments, and then there are the procedural treatments. Before we get started for considering treatments for, for female pattern hair loss, it's very important to consider the expectations. So many people expect to get a full head of hair with treatments for female pattern hair loss, and that unfortunately is not the case. Most cases respond to the treatments that are, that are outlined with stopping of the shedding or stopping of the thinning, which is not a given. And the minority of cases of the topical treatments and many of the oral treatments respond with modest, very moderate regrowth of hair. The more aggressive procedural treatments definitely result in hair regrowth more frequently than the more conservative approach, but that is not a given as well. And that needs to be followed with a time frame in mind to make sure you're getting the results that you expect. Now, first on the roster of treatments is the topical treatment category. That starts with topical minoxidil. There are other combinations of topical medications that have become very fashionable recently. Those combinations include minoxidil, finasteride, spironolactone, in some cases tretinoin, and other combinations of medications. And those medication combinations don't have a very long track record, but they are in my practice very effective. They're just much more expensive than your minoxidil, your over-the-counter conventionally produced minoxidil formulations. So if you do want more traction, or at least try something that'll get you more traction potentially, go for the combination topical treatments. Just one thing to remember is that if you're a woman of childbearing age, these medications, all the topical medications that I've mentioned right now are contraindicated in pregnancy. So be sure to be sure not to become pregnant while you're on them. If you're planning on becoming pregnant, you will need to stop those medications, go through the pregnancy, you can't, you can't breastfeed while being on these medications either. So be sure not to risk your child with these forms of treatments. The next category of treatments are the oral medications. Those consist of spironolactone, finasteride, dutasteride. Some birth control pills are involved as well. All these medications target the androgenetic pathway that can lead to dysfunction of the hair follicle and thinning of the hair. They do have varying degrees of efficacy. Each patient needs to be evaluated so the doctor can make the best judgment about finding the best fit for the patient. 
Another thing that's available is oral minoxidil. That's been getting great results. It's actually a very effective medication, doesn't really involve anything topical. Therefore, can help you avoid some of the side effects that come along with applying a topical medication to the scalp, including the nuisance of applying something topical to the scalp, dealing with the hair texture changes. And then there are the irritation possibilities that come with using a topical product. The oral minoxidil does not do that. If you've benefited from this video so far, share, like, and subscribe. If you've been using any one of the treatments that I've mentioned so far, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you're using and what sort of results have you been getting with those treatments. Has your condition gotten worse? Has your condition stopped in its tracks? Or have you have actually gotten better using any one of those medication categories? Tell us in the comment section. Let us know what's going on. Now, the next set of categories of treatments involve something called PRP, platelet-rich plasma, which is injection of a concentrate of your own blood, of the patient's own blood, which is spun down. The red blood cells are separated from the plasma and the platelets. The plasma and the platelets are concentrated further, and that concentrate is injected into the scalp. Now, the effects of platelet-rich plasma have been studied extensively, and what we think they do is encourages hair growth through providing a healthy environment to the hair follicle, including enriching the matrix, enhancing blood supply to the hair follicles, and other factors that PRP affects. PRP is rich in many different growth factors and other ingredients, and when it works, it works beautifully. And people have been generally very happy in my practice with PRP. It does require several sessions for you to see the results, and it is a pretty pricey procedure. Check with your dermatologist to see if they're actually offering PRP for your hair loss. Now, PRP, much like any other procedure when involving injection, can cause irritation of the scalp, can involve pain and discomfort while the procedure is going on, and maybe even the couple few days after the procedure. However, those go away pretty quickly, and the procedure is highly effective to reverse hair loss in many different cases. Now, the next step up would be hair transplantation. For those of you who have significant thinning, who want very quick results, who have enough hair on the back of their scalp, what can be done is that a doctor who specialized in hair transplantation or follicular unit transplantation can actually numb up the scalp, harvest hair follicles individually, usually from that area, and then transplant them or move them to the area where the hair loss has occurred through a very delicate procedure. This procedure is extremely expensive. It definitely gets traction right off the bat. However, the results down the road vary. So long-term results vary. Some people get hair transplantation, see none of the results stick around, they actually lose all the hair that was transplanted. Some people see a complete rejuvenation of the area with persistence of the follicular units that were transplanted to the area. And those people are obviously very happy. There's no way of knowing who's going to respond favorably and who's not. But it's important to know that following up with your physician, especially the one who's done the procedure, is very important to make sure nothing slips through the cracks and you're being managed properly. If you have benefited from this video, share, like, and subscribe. Put a comment in the comment section and let me know what type of hair loss procedure have you gone through? Have you done the PRP? Have you done hair transplantation? And how has either one of those worked out for you? I'm very curious to hear that. Let me know in the comment section. Thanks again for watching this video. More great content coming your way right from this channel. Thanks for watching and God bless.